4 and 5 are Gansak, Karahat, and Chat Chai Pai si Tong. And the reasons he gave for why they're his favorite are, or why they were the best is because they were never boring. And then they're all like each other. So he likes a femur but aggressive style. I think that's what he fits into as well. Here he's making a point about how the arms come down to pull someone into your knee. If you watch the second Sang Tianoi Muay Thai Library session, he makes a point about this too, about how the arms come down. Um, sorry, he's not in the Muay Thai Library. That second one is actually free on YouTube. So if you watch the free YouTube video of a day of training with Sang Tianoi, he teaches the same thing that's being taught right here with Pyrot Noi. You have to put your heel a little bit to the outside. He's saying if the foot is straight down, it's easy to trip you and your hips don't go. See how his heel goes a little bit outside his hip? So he's saying if you don't throw your hip, if you don't push your hip forward, the knee comes too high. You want to push it so that your head stays out of range of a punch, like a counter punch, and that your knee kind of spears forward and doesn't come too far up. He teaches knees the same way Karahat teaches them. Muay Cao fighters like Yod Kumpan, Diesel Noi, Chmuk Pet, they don't lean back on their knees. Neither is wrong. It's uh, a difference in style. It's a difference in like how it fits into your overall vocabulary and style. But he says don't turn your foot on the knee. Almost everyone says don't turn the foot on the knee. The only person I know who teaches you to turn the foot on the knee is Diesel Noi. He is the king of knees, <laughs> so I believe him, but he has a particular style, Diesel Noi. So you want your foot to remain facing forward on those knees in order to not if you miss your knee, you don't want to spin out, and you also want to be able to come back off of it more quickly. That's why you keep your foot facing forward. He wants power all the time, and he's very um, responsive to if I throw something that he's not directly calling for that's like an um, answer or like a counter. He totally rolls with it, which makes him a very good freestyle pad holder. I also really like how hard he hits me back. That made me really happy. <laughs> Like, if I didn't block that, that would smack me pretty hard. So he likes to double up on a single side, and he wants power on both of those. But you kind of use the first one to open for the second one. He doesn't want them to be super fast. And here he's showing... Um, what we call it when Karahat taught this in the Muay Thai library and in the intensive was windshield wipers, which is when you take someone's guard and just kind of guide it to the side so that you can counter on, on what is now the open side. You have to be able to pivot on a dime and basically matador him as he changes direction. Pak is to push, so he wants me to push and then do like a flying kick. So this is when the opponent is close to the ropes. You push them into the ropes, and then as they're bouncing off of it or stuck in it, you're like flying into them with a kick. So you have to get really close with that axe elbow. You have to be like coming right into somebody's frame. See how he's changing um, distances. So he's got kick, kick, knee, knee. You're like eating that space. And now he's teaching me um, open side. See how he's switching his stance a little bit? He's trying to get me to understand open side. And now he's hooking me while I'm kneeing <laughs> to make me honest in my leg guard. This is what he was teaching me before. So he wants this to be much faster. I kicked and my knee was already sideways. He doesn't do that. <laughs> if his knee is sideways, he pulls me into him so that he can hit me immediately. 
He's making what he's saying here is to I'm hooking the front of my foot, the top of my foot against his back. So basically, you're like creating a little uh, hook on the back of his lower back and pulling him by bending your knee to like harpoon him into you, basically. And then you can just keep doing these. This is why it's dangerous to catch kicks, is if someone knows how to have their kick caught, you better fucking know how to block. <laughs> Find your opportunity. That's ha jung what? To look for the timing. One more. One more. And that's that like stabby one. See how he, he sees it as like stomping your knee like that. <laughs> See up. You can yell see up while doing this in training. So he wants me to um, pull him when his knee comes up to do it. So I, I come up and do my like scraping knee and then when his knee comes up for him to return it, that's when I pull him to like spoil his counter. People are on one leg like Anytime you throw a knee, you're on one leg. So you're actually um, creating an opening. You're uh, vulnerable for a second. It's the same thing how in boxing, anytime you're punching, offensively, you're distracting somebody. But anytime you're punching, you've created an opening. So I thought I had to do push-ups. And he's like, no, no, no. First, you have to do these, which is another version of the like lock and knee. So there's rounds where you're like pulling and kneeing and looking for timing. And then this is basically knees on the bag, but with a person you latch onto their neck and you just do chicken knees is what Kevin and I call them. 